I want to deal with these minds. And I call it the closed mind, the confused mind, the cluttered mind, and the committed mind. Remember I told you, after you've been born again, it's all an issue of renewing your mind. Be not conformed to this world. Be not conformed to this world's thinking, the way the world thinks, the mindset of the world. That's what he's really saying when he said, be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you can prove. You don't have to have anybody else prove it. You can prove what is that good, what is that perfect, what is that acceptable will of God in your life. You will see this. So let's talk about it. First of all, let's deal with what Jesus had to say about these different minds. And Matthew chapter 13, and I'm synthesizing some of these because of the limited time we have. Matthew says, and of course Jesus is speaking, he said, He spoke, he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seed fell by what? The wayside. Wayside means side of the road. Stick with the illustration. And the fowls came and what? Devoured them up. Devoured what up? The seed. Now, I want you to think in the back of your mind, as we talk about the seed being the word of God, how can anything devour up the word of God? Think about that for a moment. How could that be since it's the word of God? And these people don't mean any good uh, toward people who want the word of God. How could the word of God subject himself to being devoured? Think about that. And so the interpretation says, Jesus said, when anyone, by the way, the people ask the question, well, what do you mean by that? Jesus spoke in parables. Let me make sure you understand. He spoke in parables for a reason. And it has a lot to do with what we're getting ready to talk about as to why the seed either is devoured up or is consumed and brings forth fruit. The reason why Jesus spoke in parables, because a lot of folks didn't understand and it required you to say, huh? What does that mean? Huh? Some people don't say, huh, they'll say, I don't understand that, I'm gone. But the people that really want to understand, they say, help me understand what you mean, and that's who he's talking to. People that come back and say, what is meant by that? What do you really want? What do you, what do you want me to get out of that? That requires effort. Say effort. The word of God is not easy but it is far more valuable than the effort that it takes to understand it. It takes effort. It took you effort to get your undergraduate degree. It took you effort to get your master's degree. It took you effort to get your PhD or your doctorate. It took you effort to be a good mother. It took you effort to be a good father. It took you time and money. So why do you think the word of God is easy? Anybody can read. The word of God never was meant to be read by itself. It was meant to be meditated. What is meant by that? What do you mean? The pathways of the just are as a shining light. They get brighter and brighter until the perfect day. What does that mean? God says, I'm glad you asked that. I've been wanting to tell you about that. I just wanted you to ask me. You understand, it says, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. But did you know that the tense on those words on asking, seeking, and knocking are in the per imperfect tense, which means keep on asking, keep on knocking, keep on seeking. You don't understand? Keep asking, keep asking. When, when Thomas Edison learned the properties and learned how to harness the power of electricity, I've read so many stories about how many times he failed. He failed and he failed and he failed and he kept getting up and kept getting up. And finally, it broke through. Failure didn't define him. Shout hallelujah. You are not a failure. You are called by God. God does not call those who he has not chosen. And if he chose you, he predetermined that you will be conformed to his will, and he justified you, and he glorified you. Shout hallelujah. You are not junk. 
I don't care what your grandmama said. I don't care what those people said about you. And I don't care what they did to you. I don't care about these people that did these, these harmful things to you. And I'm not denying that these things were very harmful. But for God, I told you, for children of God, we are the only people with the only religion that ungodliness will work for our good. Jesus. Why? Because the Bible says all things do what? Work together for our ultimate good. I didn't say all things were good, nor did I say all things will make you happy. I said all things will work together for your good. That's why you can, you can give a testimony now about the good things the Lord has done out of those bad things. Oh, God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Look, look at the text. It says, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and say it with me, and understand it not, say it with me, understand it not, say it loud, Understand it the night. That presupposes that you need to understand. When anyone heareth the word of God, the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, doesn't that also imply that you can hear and not understand? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. What does that mean? To the republic for which it stands i got to kind of think, what, what does that mean? But that didn't change the fact that I remember it. But just because you remember it don't mean you what? Understand.